Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Pranzata Podcast. I am your host, Andrea Pranzatelli. This is episode number 51 on my podcast. Uh, Before we get into it, this is a podcast where I interview comedians and musicians and other artists from the New Jersey, New York, and Philly area, and sometimes I do a solo podcast like I am today, so there's going to be audio only today, and let's get right into it. Um, So yeah, I had a couple cancellations this week. I'm kind of bummed about that. That's why I'm doing a solo podcast today. I had two guests lined up that um, are actually returning guests, um, but unfortunately both of them canceled. One got a job that like they ended up getting a gig last minute that was a very important gig so I understand that and then the other one was just um having some mental mental health issues so I mean I understand all that that's fine just a little bummed but uh we are gonna do Q&A today since it's a solo podcast I'm gonna try to keep it short today but then again I always say that um I always say I'm gonna keep it short and then it ends up like at least 45 minutes when I try like on solo podcasts, I, I really like to try to keep it 30 minutes, and then I always end up going for almost an hour, so we'll see. Um, before we get into it, a little quick uh, check-in for the day. Not having the best day today. Um, I have a gig today that I've literally been preparing weeks for um, very heavily. I've canceled a lot of plans. Um, I haven't been socializing very much because I've just been really focused on this gig. Um, it's my first ever classical gig um besides uh, I did a senior like okay I went to school for long story short I went to school for music I went to school for classical piano um and then at the end of the program in order to graduate you need to showcase um like an hour's worth of classical music um as part of your graduation that was the only time I've ever really done a classical gig and it wasn't even paid it was part of my program Um, you know, since graduating, I've done modern gigs or jazz gigs and occasionally sprinkled in classical music in there, um, but never actually got, you know, real classical gigs. Um, but this is my first ever paid classical gig. It's going to be at the Union, uh, County Performing Arts Center. So it's been an intense uh, thing to take on because I've never done anything like this before. Um, and it's going to be on like a nice, I'm pretty sure it's like a Fazioli grand piano. I'm really excited about it. Um, but not having the best day because I woke up in the middle of the night with a UTI. (laughs) Um, I mean, I'm sure it's been brewing for a few days now, but I woke up in the middle of the night with horrible pain, um, to the point where I was crying and I couldn't go back to sleep. I finally did go back to sleep. Um, and then... I was able to sleep in, thank God. Um, but when I woke up, I made basically called my doctor and begged them to please let me in. And I explained to them, I was like, listen, I was like, I know this is last minute, but I literally have been preparing for this concert thing for, you know, a month straight. And I've been really focused on it. And I'm in so much pain right now. Like, can you please just like kind of sneak me in really quick and hook me up with like something, some painkillers or whatever. Um, Thankfully, she was able to get me in and take care of it um, and get me medicine. But, dude, I don't know if anybody else out there has had a UTI. I haven't. I don't get them regularly, and I haven't had one in probably 10 years. But that shit is painful. Holy shit. I mean, I don't know. Everybody experiences it differently. But in my case, it was incredibly painful. Um, it's not fun. But it just kind of sucks that that had to happen the day of the show. But we took care of it, so it's not a big deal. Um, all right questions and answers I'm only gonna again I, I want to keep this podcast pretty short so I'm only gonna take three questions today before I get into the questions I do want to say a little story that I think is very funny um a couple last sometime last week I had a really weird dream I had a dream about this guy that I dated like a long time ago you know I was maybe 19 years old 20 years old or something like that um, and he wasn't even, he wasn't even somebody that was really significant to me. You know, I mean, like, there's, l- you know, past relationships that were very impactful on your future, you know, on, on how you've developed psychologically and stuff like that. Uh, there's definitely those types of relationships, um, ones that you've cared for more or ones that 
were particularly negative that impacted you in some sort of way this wasn't even a relationship that really meant anything to, like I feel bad if they're listening but it wasn't a relationship that really meant much to me it, it was just kind of like a stupid relationship that like blew over quickly um but anyways I had a random dream about them last week um that they were fingering my asshole okay and just to make this clear it wasn't a wet dream it wasn't it wasn't like I wasn't enjoying it it was a nightmare it was an unwanted like an assault type of dream so <laughs> they were fingering my asshole in public and I was calling for help let me reiterate this was a dream because I, if I threw out the word assault there I don't want like him to get arrested <laughs> it was a, it was a dream about assault this did not happen in real life let's just put that out there but anyways he was fingering my asshole in public and I was not happy about it and I was crying for help I was like screaming somebody I don't remember where it was it was at some like party or something um but I was screaming for help somebody please help me and there was a bunch of people watching but everybody was afraid to help um and that was it that was the dream really random like I said this person really meant nothing important to me um it you know to this I mean maybe at the time but I mean to this day it's not like a significant relationship totally fucking random um the next day okay I go to Wegmans and I ran into him whoa and I've mentioned this before I am I consider myself agnostic meaning I don't really know what's out there um but I'm open to different interpretations and ideas. I definitely lean towards believing something exists and something is out there that is bigger than what I can comprehend. Um, not in a religious way, so to speak. I'm not a religious person, but I do use the word God. I use it just to describe the thing that I don't know what is because I don't know what, like, what other word to use. Some people say the universe. Sometimes I say the universe, but really I just use the word God, not in a religious context, but to just, just to describe this thing that is bigger than me that I don't understand, you know? Um, but it's moments like this where I really start to believe in God. Um, not that I think God would take an interest in my asshole, <laughs> but just, I've mentioned, <laughs> I've mentioned this before on the podcast, but I, on previous podcasts, I really believe, I don't know, like I said, I'm agnostic. I don't know what that was, but I don't believe things like that are coincidence. Um, I do believe people are deeply connected to each other. I believe prayer works. I don't know why prayer works, um, but from over the years, I've I've noticed and learned that again two things. One, people are very connected. Like for me to ha randomly have this dream of being assaulted by him in that kind of way, and then to run into him the next day, and then considering that. And by the way, my asshole did clench up when I saw him in person the next day. <laughs> like my muscle memory from the dream. I was like, oh my God. I was like, it was just like a funny thing. But um, I don't know. Going back to it, running into somebody like that, that, like I said, really didn't, it's not somebody that I've thought about. It's not somebody that I've seen or thought about or really cared for over the years. Um, so to randomly have like such an intense dream and then to run into them the next day, in my mind, I think that my interpretation of that would be that maybe he was thinking about me. Um, maybe he had some anger towards me, you know, and maybe somehow that manifested in my dream that he was holding some sort of anger towards me in some kind of way from, because I did break up with him, you know, um, and maybe, maybe he was thinking about it and maybe he was having a moment with it and maybe that manifested in my dream and then we ran into each other, you know. We didn't say hi to each other, but he did look at me strange and he did look angry. So I, that's what I mean. It's just like a weird thing that happened. And um, I don't know. I, I, I really don't believe things like that are coincidental. I've had so many experiences in my life um, where strange things like that have happened. I can, I can throw out some examples. Again, I don't want to make this podcast very long, but um, okay, for example two times last year literally twice I was dry okay one time I was driving in my car I was doing I was having some serious financial issues and um 
I do DoorDash to fill in the gaps financially, or at least I was last year. I haven't had to do DoorDash in the past few months since getting a roommate, which has been really nice. But last year I was doing a lot of DoorDash because I was living by myself. And I think DoorDash is a great, um, it's a great temporary solution. It's not a long-term solution because when you think about it, you're putting the mileage on your cars and you have to pay the taxes at the end of the year. You don't get a tax return on that because you're kind of making the cash up front and there's no taxes taken out. Granted, you get to file um, any wear and tear on your car when you file the taxes. But again, it's one of those things that it's a great temporary solution. It's really not a good long-term solution for making money because there's um, a lot of things that you kind of have to pay back in the long run. So I remember just having a really long day driving, you know, I had worked my regular teaching job. And then at the end of the day, I was doing door dashing. And then I was just at some point in the car, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I was like, I need something like I I need some other sort of source of stable income. And I remember thinking about one of my friends who is a, a tutor. And I was like, maybe I should hit them up and see if they know any tutoring positions. Maybe I can utilize my Spanish degree. Literally in two minutes, they texted me and they're like, hey, would you want, um, I'm looking, the company I work for is looking for Spanish, Spanish teachers or, or tutors or whatever. Would you be interested? And I was like, what the fuck? And I told him, I was like, I was literally just thinking about that. I was like, I was thinking about you specifically. And I was wondering if you knew of any companies um, that needed a Spanish tutor and li- like, I'm, I'm not, a, it sounds like I'm making this up. It was literally a matter of one or two minutes later that I got a text from him right when I was thinking about it. And then, um, and that's just one example. There have been other examples like that. Um, okay. Another example, a similar thing had happened l- like six months later. It was the summertime. Cause I think, I don't remember when that happened, if it was like the fall or the spring. I can't remember what time of year that happened. But I I do know that, you know, I teach I teach music lessons. And what happens is in the summer, my business is very slow because a lot of the students either take a break for the summer or they go away. They go away for the summer. Um, and then I'm kind of like back to the DoorDash thing because, it's a, again, it's a great thing to fill in those gaps when I'm not uh, making money on my own, you know. Um, so a similar thing, I was driving in my car, like 50 or 60% of my students just like all took off at the same time, uh, to go on vacation. And I was like, wow, I'm fucked. And I was pretty much driving all day. And a similar thing happened. I, I remember thinking to myself, man, maybe I really should, I like working for myself, but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to work at a music studio just one or two days a week to fill in those gaps of when um when I need that extra money or like if students cancel or whatever I was like you know I want to primarily I want to primarily work for myself but it wouldn't be a bad idea to have just a backup you know one or two days a week work for a studio literally same thing literally right as I thought that and I kind of again we're going to get into the conversation of prayer in a second I pretty much kind of prayed it like I said it out loud and I kind of I I literally prayed to God. And like I said, I don't really use the word God in a religious context. It's just the energy, the thing that I don't understand, but I use the word God. And I literally said out loud, God, I need something else. Um, Literally within a matter of minutes, just like the previous story I'd mentioned with the Spanish tutor, within a matter of minutes, one of my friends reached out to me and she called me and she was like, hey, I desperately need a music teacher one or two days a week (laughs) for this um, company I'm working for. I'm pregnant and I have to go on maternity leave and I need somebody now, like this week. And I was like, holy shit. Like it, I, I don't, that was really fast. And again, th- like things like this happen. I really truly believe that people are connected in some kind of way. Um, I also believe that prayer works. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm open to different interpretations as to why prayer works. It could, it could be that there really is something guiding us or um another interpretation that i've thought of over the years is that perhaps um the human mind is so strong that just by praying for something out loud puts something in the you know again the universe put something in the universe into action in some kind of way like some sort of call of 
call of action to the universe by actually mentally putting something out there by saying something out loud um and then we're kind of getting into new age spirituality shit when we talk about this stuff uh i kind of believe some of that stuff kind of don't i kind of think a lot of it has become commercialized in a way um but that doesn't that's not to say that there isn't some truth to some of the new age spiritual stuff, you know? Um, again, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why things like this happen, but I have seen enough incidences like this where things happen, um, wh whether I prayed out loud and something happened, something manifested quickly, or whether I was thinking about somebody and then, or had a dream about somebody and saw them the next day. I just think there's something really interesting going on in the spiritual realm, in the realm of the mind, where human beings are very deeply intertwined with each other. Um, it's pretty interesting and pretty fascinating to me. And um, I don't know, I'd be curious to see what you guys think about that. Um, if you've had any similar experiences in your life where you, you thought about somebody and, and they popped up or had a dream about somebody and they popped up or prayed for something and then had pretty quick um, confirmation about it. I don't know kind of wanted to talk about that. That's something that really interests me. But anyways, let's get into the Q&A section. I'm only taking two or three questions today because I can ramble on and I've got a lot of shit to do today, so I don't want to continue to ramble on. Okay, question number one. Bud Brian asks me if you could, oh Jesus Christ, if you could choose to die, how? That's exactly how he phrased it. If you could choose to die, how? Well, that's pretty intense. Um, I mean, I would like to live an old age. I would like to die of old natural causes of old age. Um, I would like to die a peaceful death in my sleep. And I would like to live a very long time. Um, by the way, guys, side note. I did really improve my likes in conversation, but I'm not sure if I've improved my ums. I say um a lot still, but I have improved the likes, so I'm proud of that. So I'm going to try not to say um. But if I don't say um, I'm just going to have silence. I don't know which one's worse. Maybe the silence is better. I literally wanted to say um right there, but I'm just going to be silent. So, yeah, I want to die peacefully in my sleep. I mean, who wouldn't want to? Who who would who <laughs> would anybody want to get shot in the head or die of cancer? Like you know, um, yeah, I want to live an old. I want to live till my late nineties. I don't know if I want to live till hundred. That's a bit much, but I would like to live until at least my early nineties, like ninety, ninety five, ninety six, something like that. And I would like to die of natural causes peacefully in my sleep. I don't know if old people ever die painlessly though that's something that's sort of always been on my mind even if you die of natural causes even any natural cause would still be incredibly painful right I don't know I don't I'm not really sure if there really is such thing as a peaceful death no matter what unless you're put on medication and unless you're actually put on medication intentionally to die peacefully in your sleep because somebody knows you're gonna die sort of thing kind of like what they do to animals you know pets but I definitely don't want to go into a nursing home that's for sure I would like to die in the comfort of my own home I would like to die with people there I would like I'm not one of those people I don't think I'm one of those people that would want to be all alone I would like people in the room with me people that I love and care about family you know so yeah that answers the question really I I certainly wouldn't want to die of anything else like I wouldn't want to die of a car accident or a heart attack or whatever I would like to live a long life and die in my sleep peacefully next question is by Eric Roper and he asks how does it feel to be in a relationship versus being single um there you go I did an um I think I think the reason he's asking this is because he is a loyal Pranzada listener and he's also my Instagram follower. So he knows that I recently, he, he's been listening to a lot of my podcasts and he knows that several months ago or sometime last year, I did a podcast complaining about feeling very lonely and now I'm in a relationship. So he knows about that. So he's probably just asking me that um, to kind of keep tabs on how I'm feeling. 
It's funny you should say that because it's been a topic that's been on my mind. I pretty much did an entire podcast about this, so I, I hope I'm not reiterating myself, but I am going to a little bit just for the sake of answering the question. And also because in case some, some people didn't see that podcast, they didn't hear it. But the past year, I had this major epiphany in my life that was something I really think I needed to go through. I needed to experience the most intense depths of loneliness in order to really value human connection because a lot of my life I really was under the mindset that I was meant to be alone in many ways I was meant to I didn't feel like I had much family support I didn't feel like I had much friend support I really isolated myself a lot really my whole life um Again, I've already kind of talked about this in depth, so I don't want to ramble on about it. But long story short, I think it was more so for survival because I had some issues. um, I had some issues with my mother growing up, and that caused me to kind of literally for the sake of survival sort of raise myself. And because of that, I sort of believed that lonely being alone was the safest way to survive and in my case it sort of was when I was little um but the problem with that is that that belief carried with me my entire life and I really isolated myself a lot and I really truly isolated myself the past two years um I decided to get an apartment by myself under the mindset that if I had anybody to live with that they would interfere with my progress and you know they would get in the way in some kind of way and I also kind of told myself that I needed to be single in order to be successful as well and I just remember it's funny I don't (laughs) I don't really like so I go to a therapist but you know it's hard to get an appointment with a therapist because the one I go to is through the county and it's free so it's not like I can just pop in any day of the week um I sort of only am able to get an appointment every two weeks or so and so on the weeks that I don't have my therapist and I'm having sort of issues that I'm going through I kind of ask Google (laughs) for advice which is a very dangerous thing sometimes because you don't really know where you're getting your information from um so I ask I ask Google a lot of questions about relationship advice and um, psychological advice and that sort of thing. So I remember when I was single last year and when I was all by myself, I would sort of ask for advice on what I should be doing and how to make the best of it and how to make the best of my single life. And pretty much all the advice that I got from Google, and again, you don't know where you're getting this information from. Like, meanwhile, I could be... I could be getting information from some like 13 year olds blog. Like, I don't know what the fuck like I'm reading, but regardless, all the information sort of said the same thing. Everything, a lot of the sources that I read sort of said the same thing. There was, you know, a pattern and similarities between um, advice on being single and how to behave. And a lot of the advice I read was if you're single, that is the best time to really thrive and get to know yourself and um relationships are sort of a thing of the past you don't really need them anymore women don't need relationships anymore um successful women can thrive by yourself like like that sort of stuff and basically all the advice said this is the best time for you to know yourself and um as long as you're filling your days in with as long as you're taking care of yourself and you're have doing things and you have hobbies you don't need anybody and you don't need a man and you don't need that. It's kind of a lie that you need that sort of stuff. You can just be happy on your own. And I can tell you that I followed all this advice to a T. I mean, it, if anybody, if anybody fills their days with stuff to do, it's me. I do stuff like I had a podcast. I was out, I was out doing open mics and comedy gigs and music gigs and all kinds of stuff. I mean, I'm working out and, funny enough I was taking care of my quote-unquote soul whatever you want to call it and I was taking care of myself and at the end of the day I still felt incredibly lonely and I still felt like life was meaningless it didn't and that was definitely a lesson that I had learned over the past year 
um, is that even though I was following all this advice to the T and just doing everything quote unquote correctly, I couldn't have been more miserable in my life. I, the, the more I followed that advice, the, the worse I got. Um, to the point where I finally broke down, really, like my mental health started seriously declining um, and I couldn't do it anymore. And I just kind of broke down and I, um, again, prayed. I literally prayed to God. I was like, God, I don't even know what I need. I don't even know what it is that I need. I don't think, I just kind of let go of control of what I thought was correct. Like in, in my mind, I was doing everything correctly, but I wasn't getting anywhere. So I kind of just like broke down, collapsed, like physically, mentally, I, I had reached my end. And I was just like, I don't know what's best for myself. I have no fucking clue. I was like, I don't know if I need a new job. I don't know if I need to move. I don't know where I need to move. I don't know anything. And I just kind of want to release control of what I think is right and what I think is correct for me. And just like something needs to inter intervene in my life and show me what's correct. And literally, again, this is another one of those things that, you know, I think prayer works literally the next day. I had a podcast guest and at the end of the podcast we were chilling chilling I said that so stupidly we were chilling um we were (laughs) we were chilling in my um this is like the whitest way you could possibly say that chilling we were chilling in my um extra room my spare bedroom and she was just like can I rent this room out and I was like it happened so suddenly and so quickly. And again, it had, it had literally just been one day before that I had prayed to God, I don't know what I need. And, and at, at some point in that prayer, I was like, I might need a roommate. I might need a new job. I don't know what it is I need, but all I know is that you need to do it because I can't do it for myself. I, I, I'm, I'm lost, you know? Um, and then, and then, when she told me that I put very, I basically told her, listen, the answer is probably yes. Just give me two weeks to think about it. But within two or three days, I was like, yes, you can move in. And since that, my mind has kind of been opened, um, to the reality. And this is something that maybe everybody listening to this knows this already. They're like, yeah, no fucking, no shit. Dumbass people need each other this isn't news to anybody, but it really was news to me because I had lived so much of my life alone thinking that being alone was the best thing for me. Um, but I, I really quickly started to learn that life was better with her, you know? I mean, and you know, it's not perfect. We have our differences. Um, we have some political differences. Um, but at the end of the day, we having that teammate, you know, as my, my roommate, having it, having somebody here, makes everything better it it just it kind of like all the gaps are filled in in the ways that I can't fill in myself and then it seems like I'm not answering your initial question which was um how does it feel to be in a relationship versus being single but I'm getting there in one second so that was the first lesson learned was that I can't I can't do it alone anymore I can't be alone anymore maybe that worked for me as a kid when I needed to protect myself and um kind of survive on my own because I was having issues with my family unit but that's not that doesn't mean that's the best way to live um and as a matter of fact I have been hearing more and more from different sources um one including the Lex Friedman podcast which um huge fan of his podcast uh he's an AI scientist I you know I I trust his word a lot I think he's a very knowledgeable person um but he I've read this in other sources and I've also heard this on his podcast that right now society is going through a lonely phase where I'm not the only one like who's been alone or has thought that being alone was the better way to live but you know um there is far less community now and there's a lot more there's a lot more evolution of apartments and people not having kids and people not having family unions life is sort of evolving in a way where people are are isolated they're behind a uh, behind a computer screen they're by themselves all day Um, they're not having kids they're not um, even really seeing some people don't even see their family anymore some people live in other parts of the country they split up from their family Um, a lot of women uh, are not just women but men too a lot of people are like straying away from um, monogamy and a lot of people are just choosing to live a single life instead of the traditional you know married with kids life it's very common um 
but what I was getting to, what I heard at several sources and on the Lex Friedman podcast is that there are people who are, some people are, are evolving in a way where they're fighting for resources um, and they're choosing to be alone. But studies show, and again, I don't know what these studies are. I'm just uh, quoting things I've read and the podcast. So you might have to look into the studies yourself. But they said that studies show that communities that learn to cooperate as a as a community versus fight for resources or live solo end up thriving more and end up living longer lives and um over generations and procreating and stuff like that and um that's something totally new to me that it's like a totally new concept and again this might be something that most of the listeners are thinking like well yeah no shit idiot we all know that i didn't know that you know this is totally news to me that the concept of doing things as a team is so much better than doing things alone and you can really thrive better now let's get into the relationship aspect of this again i all the you know the google blogs told me that i would be happier single and i was not um i am so much happier in a relationship I feel like there is support in which I was not able to find or get by myself. Um, And I can't speak for everybody. Everybody's different. There, you know, not all your support needs to come from a relationship. So there could be people, a a romantic relationship, I mean, there could be, be, there could be people out there that truly um, feel better single and they are able to get their support from friendship groups and family, et cetera. I personally feel happier in a relationship um i do think there are such there is such a thing as bad relationships i don't like to use the word toxic i think it's overused but um let's just say negative or you can use the word toxic toxic just to understand the context of what i'm talking about there there is such a thing as relationships that are worse that are actually worse i should just say toxic in this i feel like i'm trying to avoid it but it's like toxic is the best word there are there is such a thing as toxic relationships and in that case it would be better to be single but when the timing is right and you find somebody that is good for you and you find something that isn't toxic i personally believe that being in that is so much better than being single there's just like I said, there's just, it, it's, it's just that group effort. There's cooperation, there's support. Um, if you have to be, oh, here's the thing though, you have to be open to it. You know, not everybody's open to it. Um, if you're the kind of person who, and I've been this person before, by the way, when I was younger, I've been this person. If you're the kind of person who's quick to jealousy or, um, quick to like look for red flags, like who, you know, who who's quick to, worry or be anxious about the other person's flaws and stuff like that then that is going to develop into a toxic relationship you have to be open to it and i think once i think once you're in a relationship where both parties are have open hearts where both parties are willing to trust each other where both parties are willing to support each other be honest with each other if you find two people that are willing to do it that way then a relationship is a beautiful thing and i think that is so much better than being alone and being single um and again if if you're not if your heart's not open to it yet then you should be single and until you figure out why you're not open to it or again maybe you're one of those people that just does better with that relationship I can't speak for everybody I'm only speaking from my own experience but I don't know I, I just think this past year my heart has been open a lot more to trusting and really doing it correctly and because of that, I feel a lot happier in a relationship versus being single. Um, God, so much happier in, in in multiple ways, like like not even just romantically, like like I said, with my roommate and with um, opening up more friendships and stuff like that. I feel so much happier, so much more fulfilled. And really, there has been such a lesson learned this year that people are meant to be together. People are meant to be with other people whether it's relationships, friends, family, people are meant to thrive as communities. And I'm going to continue to live my life that way, um, keeping that in mind. And I think that should also reflect in your work as well. I think if you, if you're working your job and somewhere in your job, you're not considering how it affects the, the community of your job, I don't think that's a fulfilling job, you know, for example, and I, I believe I have talked about this on the podcast 
in the past, okay, I, I like, I'm a musician. If I put myself out there with the mindset that I'm just here to get views and I'm just here to get followers and I'm just here to get attention from me, that's not a fulfilling way to live. And at some point that's going to fail. When I change the dialogue to, I'm here to serve the community. I'm here to make the people happy. I'm or, or whatever musicians do to the people. I'm here to set the mood. I'm here to make people happy. I'm here to make people sad. I'm here to make people dance. When I really twist it around, and s that sounds negative, but you know what I mean. When I really turn it around the other direction and say, it's not for them to look at me. It's for me to serve them. It really, it it's it's so important. I, I think that people belong together. I think people belong in relationships. People belong in communities. And I, th I think it's important to live your life that way, even if it's not a romantic relationship, even if it's thinking about the purpose and the community of the job you do or whatever, helping your family. There's so many ways to find that community, even outside of a romantic relationship. Okay. Like I said, I'm only doing three questions today. So I did number one, I did number two, <laughs> number three, last question. And this person prefers to remain anonymous. And they ask me, <laughs> oh my God, um, what is the weirdest porn title you've ever watched? All right, I have to say, even me, I'm an open book on this podcast. You guys know it. You guys know that. I literally just opened this podcast like talking about a dream I had where my ex-boyfriend was fingering my asshole. So clearly I don't stray away from being open. But even for me, this is like weird to talk about. Um, especially by myself. So I don't think I can honestly answer the question right now. I think if I had a comedian here with me right now, I would be more open to talking about it because um, we would kind of bounce ideas off each other and go back and forth. And I think when you get two comedians together, that type of stuff, but just like me on a solo podcast talking about porn I watch feels so fucking awkward. Um, so I'm not going to really answer the question, but I'll, I'll, I guess I'll use the question to kind of, <laughs> excuse me I'm talking so much without breathing so my throat's starting to hurt um I think I will use the question to kind of provoke some thoughts about the porn industry in general because this has been something that's been on my mind but hot take my hot take is that I do not think porn is bad for you um I think like anything else uh, too much of something is a bad thing so for example too much of a good thing can be a bad thing even. Um, it, running is good for you. But if you become addicted to running to the point where you don't eat or you don't stretch, well, then you can injure your knees. Or, you know, even drinking. Um, one or two drinks at a social event or a party can be a, <coughs> can be a great social lubrication. But if you drink every day, you're going to be really sick and you can develop alcoholism. So... I feel like porn is no different. I feel like if you reach a point where you don't want to have real relationships with people or you find regular sex boring or you watch it so much that you don't go to your job, well then of course, if you have a porn addiction, then it's not good for you. But I think if you watch it responsibly, <laughs> you know, just like drinking responsibly, I actually think it's very good for you. Like it releases endorphins. It's a natural, um, it's a natural way to lift your mood. And here's the other thing. I always hear people say that it's porn isn't realistic. What are you talking about? They're, they're real people having sex. What's not realistic about it? I mean, okay, granted, granted there's, okay, granted from the feminine perspective, there's like breast implants and that sort of thing. <coughs> I understand that that's not realistic. Or in some circumstances, there's uh, there's like scenes being played out that aren't real scenes in real life. They're like fantasies um, that probably aren't as common in real life. That sort of stuff. Yeah, that's fake. But there's so much porn out there now that you don't have to watch fantasy like fake titty porn there 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 is amateur porn out there and I, I think that's more the stuff that I like to watch so for me I think it's actually a good thing and a healthy thing I think um I think I'm a responsible porn user in the sense that 
I watch it in such a way that enhances my sex life. Like it might inspire me to try something new, you know, with my partner or um, it might just like, to me, it inspires me. I, I, I don't, I don't feel like it ever um, desensitizes me. I don't feel like it ever takes me away that I don't enjoy real sex. I think all it for, but then again, I'm, I'm also like, (laughs) <laughs> kind of going back to the original question like what's the weirdest porn I've ever watched I don't think I really I think I'm pretty vanilla when it comes to sex like I, I don't like I don't have gizmos and gadgets and whips and chains like I'm not that type of person so for me I'm not really drawn to watching like weird porn so I don't really think anything I've watched I mean I'm sure I've dabbled into some weird stuff at some point but I think the regular stuff is great. Like I, I enjoy regular sex and that's not to say I'm, I'm bad at it. it. It just means that I find enough pleasure in doggy and missionary and that sort of thing that I'm like, this is awesome as it is. I don't need to go down this weird rabbit hole of like s- s- sadistic acts and that type of stuff. And I, th- I think those are the people who may struggle with porn or think it's bad for you are people that I've heard of some people that are so addicted to porn that they become totally desensitized to regular sex that now they can only get off to like having their asshole fisted by a guy with a spiky glove on like like I understand I understand in that sort of context like that's probably bad for you but I think for me specifically I'm really just more drawn to very natural types of porn. And because of that, I don't think it's bad for me. Um, but I, again, I think that kind of differs for each person. I, th- I, I think if you kind of go down these weird rabbit holes of like sadistic porn, which again, may not necessarily be bad for you either. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I just, from my perspective personally, I don't think porn is bad for you. I think it's actually great um, and it's very healthy for me. And um, it's like a natural, I don't know, natural uh, mood lifter if I'm having a bad day or something like that. Um, And I don't like, I don't watch it every day either. That's the other thing. I sort of go through phases with my cycle, with my feminine cycle, like around ovulation. I'll watch it like five times a day. And then the other, the other like days of the month, I'll just, I might not even watch it for a week and a half or so like that. So I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I have a good relationship with it. So because of that, I'm, I don't stigmatize it or think it's the devil. I think it actually, it could be a very healthy thing if you watch porn responsibly. Um, anyways, that's it. I only decided to take three questions today because I didn't want to ramble on for too long. So that's it. This is the Prans Out of Podcast, episode number 51. Don't forget to chime in the conversation at any point. Um, Leave a comment below on anything you agreed or disagreed with. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new and you enjoyed yourself. And I will be seeing you next week with hopefully a real guest if they do not cancel. And that's it. Prans out of podcast. Have a good day. Bye.